Oh gosh, now we're headed into dangerous territory. It's a DIY project, which means I'm going to try to tell you something about electronics. I'll preface this with I know exactly enough to be super dangerous. So <laughs> double check my work, do your own research, don't destroy your gear on my account. Okay, what are we looking at? This is an attenuator box and there are a few, a handful that are commercially available. I think mostly for like sort of pro audio gear. Um, yeah, but there's not a ton. They're, they're kind of spendy uh, for what they actually are. Uh, and basically what, you know, attenuation means is just sort of reducing um, the amount of signal. So what we're doing here is reducing the signal so that we can run headphones off of speaker amps. What? Why would you do that? That's madness. It, it is madness, and I'll talk about why you would do it in, in a minute. Um, but if you're going to do it, there's a couple of things you need to do, right? You don't want to just... You could certainly make a wiring loom that has, you know, uh, XLR input for your, your headphone cable on one side, and then go straight into your um, speaker terminals on the other side. There's a number of reasons you really don't want to do that. Typically, speaker amps are way more powerful, and you you know, risk uh, destroying your headphones, or at least damaging them. Uh, two, a lot of speaker amps, especially tube amps, which I'm partial to, they might actually have a relatively loud noise floor when you plug something as sensitive as a headphone into them. So you're going to be hearing a lot of, uh, you know, just the system at work. Like I've had, I have a, a bottlehead stereo more, which runs two way three tubes as output tubes and hooked up to speakers, even incredibly sensitive speakers. Um, unless you put your ear like right up to the speaker, you really won't notice that there's, you know, quite a bit of, uh, sort of just background hum in the system. Um, those, those tubes are just a, a bit, a bit noisier. Um, but when you plug in headphones, you certainly do. So even though that's only a like three watt, um, amplifier, which you in theory could just plug your headphones into. And I have actually plugged uh, hard to drive headphones into it directly. Uh, it, you still want some attenuation because you want to get rid of that um, that background noise uh, so you can turn up the volume of the amp and get more of the signal, the cleaner signal that you want. So anyway, lots of, lots of, and you know, also, you know, this stuff's just fun to experiment with and it's really interesting to hear different power sources for your headphones. So this is a super easy build if you're not a big DIYer, solderer of things. Anyone can make this thing. Um, parts list is as follow. We got two, these are called L pads. These are variable L pads. So L pads, just a circuit design. You could design your own uh, L pad with uh, a set of resistors, basically in the sh shape of an L uh, between like an arm going, Never mind. Don't look it up. Um, you could build one uh, yourself if you wanted pretty easily. The trick is that you have to know exactly how much attenuation you want. And since I wanted to play with a lot of different uh, headphone amps, um, I wanted variable so I could kind of adjust and find the right, the right balance. You can also get a stereo variable L pad so that it's just one, one knob to turn. Uh, I kind of like having the two channels separate because one, it keeps my signal path completely separate inside the box, but two, um, you know, for amps that aren't like perfectly balanced between left and right channel, it does allow for a little bit of adjustment or if for some reason the headphones are not perfectly balanced and it just lets you tweak it just a little bit. Um, so the negatives are like, you're not going to get quite as pure or clean of a signal using a variable L pad as you would if you built your own and the resistors that are in this aren't going to be of maybe the highest end, uh, quality that you might source for yourself. If you were, if you were picking things like I've been, uh, I, I've been told that non-inductive resistors are going to really protect the high end, um, part of the signal path, which these are not. And that's probably one of the criticisms of this is that you, the, the, the very sparkly sort of high end stuff does, does suffer a little bit. Um, so anyway, you have two of these guys, if you want to go with the, the mono ones or one single one, if you're stereo or you could get resistors and just build the circuit yourself, you obviously need your, your binding posts to get your uh, speaker inputs in. Uh, and then a, if depending on what kind of headphones you're running out of the, the other side, Pretty much I, all my stuff has got, you know, four pin XLR balanced cable. And um, I, I kind of think if the kind of headphones that you want to run are going to be a little more demanding, that's really, that's, that's what you want <laughs> because you can push more power through it than a, a single ended typically. So, but you could, you could do single ended quarter inch, 
3.5 millimeter, whatever you want there, and wire to it. Um, so let's take a look at this wiring. I drew you guys a wiring diagram. Oh God. So anyway, uh, very simple. You got your two your two channels um, coming in off your your speaker taps. Uh, there's on these variable L pads. There's um, there's basically you know two <laughs> there's, they're gonna find three tabs on these things most of them are gonna be numbered you'll have to look up what the numbers represent on the particular one that you're getting um, but basically uh, you can you can see how this maps over to uh, this is our our four pin and um, in, in this case it's a you know like a panel or chassis mount one you could you don't have to have a box you could do all this as loose wires it's just kind of nice to have a box uh, and then the other channel is just the reverse of that this uh, diagrams these things are a little confusing so you can see this is actually kind of upside down of how you're typically used to interfacing with them so just kind of keep that in mind there's uh, these are also you will have to double check uh, that this this um, pinout is correct as well this one two three four um, and maps to left channel and right channel so anyway it's pretty simple Pretty simple to get this guy done. It's just these are just all little solder points, solder points on the back of this thing. Um, you could probably do it all with little alligator clips if you just wanted to have a play and not actually get out the soldering iron. But like I said, it's there's enough room. This isn't complicated stuff. This is very. I I can't show you the inside of this because the soldering's embarrassingly bad, but <laughs> um, it works. Uh, no problem. And then just you know. Um, picking a good quality uh, wire to make all those 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 point to point connections um, is is advisable as well. So anyway, yeah, all you need soldering iron, drill, screwdriver. I think dremels are really helpful when you're kind of making these holes in the project boxes. In project box, you can get in any shape, size, color you like, well, mostly black. Um, needle nose pliers are super helpful when you're doing this stuff. So you got it built. You plug it in what's it gonna sound like well it's gonna sound like the, the source the, the amp and that's what's so cool about it I've I've tried this one with um, as I mentioned the the stereo more which is a very low power tube amp which I run some very efficient speakers on uh, I also tried it with the um, shit Asia which is like I think 20 watts per channel 20 25 watts per channel um, and also with uh, the deckware Tory, which is about the same power rating as the as the shit. But so some solid state, the push pull tube, single ended tube, um, and they all you know have unsurprisingly pretty different and interesting uh, characteristics. Um, one thing that's really fun about having all that power at your disposal is if you have harder to drive headphones, uh, like I've tried this with a pair of HE one thousand V twos, uh, Abyss twelve sixty six. Uh, Argons, like a bunch of pretty hard to drive stuff. Even though I have some decently powerful headphone amplifiers, having that level of drive at your disposal is just really satisfying. Uh, things get super, super flushed out, super rich. Um, the the stereo more with the two eight three tubes has like this. It's almost like I want to call it like a '70s hi-fi sound. It's just so rich and just. Um, you, you do lose a tiny bit of crispness on the edges, a little bit of the sparkle, but um, it's just you could just listen to rock music on all day because it just it feels so rock and roll. It feels so good. Um, the the Asia is you know I think pretty sort of natural, warm, solid state amp. Um, it's a bit cleaner. You don't have really no, noise floor issues like with the tube ones. It's, it's kind of nice. Um, and again, you just have all that all that power at your disposal. Um, so very fun, I think. The 1266 in particular sounded really good on that because um, they're so detailed. They will just tell you, they will give you anything <laughs> that they can pick up on to amplify or, you know, to, to uh, reproduce for you. So they preferred that solid state sort of clean signal. Um, anyway, uh, super fun. I think, I don't know, 40, 50 bucks worth of parts, maybe all in. Maybe that's more than it really is. Um, like I said, if you did it with a, you know, a couple of few buck resistors uh, on your own, you save a little money there. Don't need a fancy project box. Don't need the fancy uh, binding post. You know, there's a lot of ways to cost that down if you just want to play. Um, like I said, you can even probably like alligator clip this thing up um, if you wanted to just have a listen. So yeah, 
DIY stuff. I might put a few more little wacky projects on the channel. I don't know. Let me know if you find it interesting or if this is not your cup of tea. Uh, either way, do go ahead and subscribe. Um, very much appreciate the conversations I've had on the channel with, with folks uh, over the past couple months. So if you've got some thoughts, if you've got a little project that you love that you know makes your headphone or stereo uh, experience better, then let me know. I'd love to hear about it. All right, until next time, this is Signcraft signing out.